Hey, so I'm gonna show you how I got this shot using just my iPhone and one continuous light. It's been a while, hasn't it? So I recently came across this Instagram account of this guy who makes reels, and I think he's also big on TikTok. He may be on TikTok and just repurpose his content for reels, not too sure. But what he does is he takes these funny videos of like over complicated tutorials or hacks. Like if you were to watch the original videos, it's pretty obvious that, you know, these creators are taking unnecessarily complicated approaches to a simple task. And what this guy does is he plays these videos first and then he shows himself doing the same hack or task, but in a super simple and obvious kind of way. So seeing his version after the original makes you think, well, of course you would do it the easy way anyway. It's just common sense. So basically the idea behind his videos is to show how ridiculous the original hack uh, videos are. It's the exaggeration of the common sense that, well, at least made it funny for me. I don't know about you, but. Okay, you're probably wondering, well, what does this have anything to do with lighting or the picture that you were going to show us how to create? Well, what I really appreciated was the concept behind his videos, and that's to keep things simple. And coming across those videos, I thought, this is a great example of how to approach lighting in food and still life photography, because I think at some point or another, we can tend to overcomplicate things either in our heads or on the shoot without really meaning to. And I know I do this a lot, and according to some of the feedback I got from you guys, I'm sure you can relate as well. So simply put, the idea behind this video is approaching lighting with simplicity. And there's just something really appealing and attractive about that kind of approach or attitude. And in the end, I want to try to demonstrate that in this video. All right, so I need a surface to place the bottle on, obviously. So I'm going to use my sawhorses, place a surface on top of it, and then we'll place a white plexiglass on top of that as well. So of course you can use other means of which to sit the bottle on top. I want to use sawhorses because this specific kind or model has these little divots right here. And this is where I'll be able to place my background at an angle, which will be very important to the overall exposure. And if that doesn't make any sense to you, I'll show you why right now, actually. <laughs> so the next is the background. For this, I just placed a C-stand with a boom arm raised up behind the surface and then took this white trifold fill card and placed it in these little grooves on the sawhorses, which I just mentioned earlier, and it should hold the card in place. Now I have it set at an angle with respect to the surface because I simply want the background to have a gradient to it. When I place the light near the edge of the set, because this edge of the background will be closer to the light, it will appear brighter and as we move towards the top of the frame, the exposure should gradually fall off so that it has this subtle gradient across the background which will ultimately give more what's called tonal range in the photo rather than just having, you know, the background completely white. So I believe in doing this, having that gradient adds more depth to the photo. Next is the camera placement. I simply attached my phone to a phone clamp and attached it to my tripod like so. Made sure to get the tripod low enough so that the camera would be just below eye level while also taking advantage using the reflection of the bottle via the plexiglass, which I think adds some production value as well. And plus, it saves me time trying to recreate it in Photoshop. Now for lighting, I placed another C-stand next to the surface. I used my Roscoe Tough White Diffusion roll and made sure it was flush up against the edge of the surface. Then I just attached my SL60W to a light stand, attached a small strip box to it, 
placed it roughly six to eight inches from the diffusion paper and angled it slightly towards the camera. Then I just set the light to full brightness. So the reason why I chose a strip box was because of its shape. And that's important because my subject is very reflective and will reflect whatever shape my light source ends up being. If I didn't use a modifier, for example, the reflection would show as a hot spot on the bottle, which I ultimately didn't want. And using the strip box, on the other hand, I'm able to reflect the size and shape of that strip box alongside of the bottle, which I think complements the bottle more nicely than the single hotspot did. Another thing to keep in mind is where I placed this light with respect to the subject. I want that reflection to be placed on the bottle in such a way that it complements the label. If I place the strip box too far to the front, that reflection would distract from the label. Put it too far back, the label and even the overall tonal variation of the picture changes. So finding that right spot for the light is crucial in this case. All right, and if I take the shot right now, the right side is gonna be dark, and it is. And I'm sure you already know, it's because there's no reflected light bouncing back in. So because of that, of course, I'm gonna to have to add in some fill light. And for that, I'm gonna use my large V flat and place it rather close to the set like so. And if you're wondering, well, what if I don't have a large V flat? Could I just use, you know, a small foam board instead? Yes, you definitely can. And I think the result will be pretty similar. The reason I use a large V flat is because the large surface area of the V flat allows light to be filled in, but still preserves the quality of the shadows, if that makes sense. I think that's really important to understand. It's because I can place this relatively far away from the subject, but still have the fill card big enough to have light bounce in the shadow areas without eliminating the shadows completely. Now compare that to if I were to simply place a foam board, which you can totally do next to the subject, it may risk the photo coming out completely flat because of how close um, I would have to get it. So I hope that makes sense. The app I used for this was the Lightroom camera app and my settings were ISO 100, F2.2, and 1 120th of a second. And in terms of knowing what settings to use, all I did was put the light at 100% and then make sure my ISO was as low as it can go without having to slow down my shutter speed too much. So for example, if I went to my phone's lowest ISO setting, which I believe is ISO 40, then I would need to drop my shutter speed to a pretty slow, speed and that could cause problems because this phone clamp isn't the most stable it actually wiggles very easily as you can see so in this case the sweet spot was at iso 100 and 1 1 20th of a second all right then all i have to do is make sure the bottle is aligned set a 10 second timer on the app and then take the picture okay so i know it doesn't look like much straight out of camera it actually does look a little dark or underexposed, but I purposely underexposed it because I didn't want to blow out this strip of highlight on the bottle, which totally would have happened had I upped the exposure just a little bit more. So that when I take it into post, since I was also able to preserve the shadows with the V-flat, I could brighten up the overall exposure of the entire image while attempting to balance the exposures across the bottle from this highlight to the shadow region on the right side of the bottle. And that's essentially how I came to this final shot. If there's anything I'd want you to take away from this video, it's this. It's to not make lighting more complicated than it needs to be. Now that doesn't mean that your lighting setups have to be boring. It means that when you're trying to figure out how to light something in a particular way and are having trouble with it, just remember to keep it simple. And I found that the most creative photographs that I've made were because I would constantly keep it as simple as I can. And more often than not, you may realize that the more simple the method, the much more pleasing the results may turn out to be. All right, and by the way, yes, I'm back. Contrary to several comments that I've received on some of my videos that asked if I was dead or alive, here I am. Now, I could probably annoy you with all the details, but that would most likely be a waste of time. So rather, I'm just gonna tell you that I'm back and I also wanna say thank you. 
Thank you for sticking around and supporting this channel, and especially those of you who personally reached out to me either through email or Instagram or on in my YouTube comments. I really do appreciate that, so thank you. All right, well, thanks for watching. I hope you are doing well, and I'll see you next time.